What's going on guys? Glad to have you back. I'm here today to talk to you about a problem that I've been having with my DJI Action 2 and filming with Rocksteady stabilization. Now, I know what you may be saying. I was a huge fanboy of this camera. What happened, Kevin? Well, what happened is I've been using it a ton more. So I have two Action 2s. It is what I use on my drone all the time now, and I've gotten a lot of footage with this system. I've put out a couple of videos, but the issue that I've been seeing when filming 4k 30 ultra wide with rock steady on is at times usually in a fairly stable section of the flight like smooth forward flight a punch out etc i'm getting a bit of a wobble in the footage now it's not something like an input that i'm putting in that's making it through the stabilization it's more an artifact of the stabilization itself and i've not been able to put my finger on it the tune that i have the drone flying on is good i've had it on three different builds uh all two of those on uh, 4.2, one on 4.3 with smooth motors. I know it's like the smoothest uh, setup ever and I'm still having this issue. So today I wanna test out a new feature that is on the DJI Action 2 and that is steady mode. And I wanna see if it still shows up in that footage. Is there an, I know that there's no improvement because I've been having it on this firmware of the Action 2 with the rock steady stabilization. So let's show some rock steady stabilization with a bit of those wobbles. I'll point them out to you guys. If you're watching on a cell phone you're probably going to have a bit of a hard time seeing these issues but if you're watching on a full screen monitor at home or a tv it's going to be pretty apparent to you guys so let's go take a look at that first off So that was quite the hectic run for testing out uh, Rocksteady. I hope that I got a few blips in there. I'm sure that I probably did. I also have a few flights out here running just the steady setting on the Action 2, and I've already reviewed some of it, and I've seen that it's much better. So I'm gonna let you guys go check that out while I walk interior here, where there are a ton of lines, a ton of things to explode on. I got myself a radio, a quad, a bag, a batteries and props, and we are gonna go explode some shit. So let's go check it out. <laughs> Unfortunately, as you saw in the flight footage, the new stabilization types on the DJI Action 2 are not going to cut it. I'm still getting all sorts of weird anomalies. So 
I'm super disappointed in that. Uh, it's time to look at other options. So I decided to go and record a couple of clips with no stabilization and to try to run them through the new GyroFlow software. If you're not familiar, it's a new piece of open source software that allows you to stabilize footage based off of gyro data. It's a mix of gyro and optical flow, like visual based uh, stabilization. Anyways, uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna run through, I'm gonna do you a quick tutorial on how to use this piece of software. However, if you've not already checked it out, I highly recommend that you check out uh, Paul Nurkula, Nurk FPV's full on definitive guide to the gyro flow stabilization software. Honestly, I did not go and watch the full video before I first tried to film this and I had a complete failure. He does a great job of laying out all the information that you need to know about this. So I'm gonna give you the quick down and dirty guide of how I'm doing it with the DJI Action 2. Uh, footage and if you want more details go check out Paul's video it is a great resource all right so let's get down and into it first thing you're gonna do is obviously launch the gyro flow software now uh, gyro flow has two, basically two sides your inputs and then your settings and outputs on the left hand side we're gonna put pick all of our video files so I'm gonna open file here and I'm gonna choose the file that I am working with I've already kind of done the export here um, so it's kind of like a cooking show. I'm going to show you how I do it and then I'm going to show you the end results like right away lickety split. So uh, now we have loaded our footage and you may notice here that I am, I am using 4.3 uh, footage from the Action 2. I filmed a couple of clips, one in 4.3 ultra wide and one in the 16 by 9 ultra wide. And I am not, I haven't been able to get a good calibration on the 16 by 9 ultra wide. I think it is just so wide and so stretched at the corners. I end up getting too many errors in it and I find jitters in the footage that is output by GyroFlow. I just can't get a result that I'm happy with with the 16 by 9 footage, unfortunately. However, I am really happy with where this 4.3 footage is going. So that's what I'm going to show you how I am working it right now, okay? So we've got the, uh, the footage that we've selected. So the next thing that we're gonna do is we are going to select our lens profile. Now for the uh, Action 2 uh, in 4.3, I'm just using this lens profile here. They did not tell what uh, wideness they use, but I find that it's working good. I think that they probably use the ultra wide. I have not tried to create my own lens profile. Um, I, I want to because I want one that tells you what the, uh, the you know, field of view is set to on it. Anyways, uh, moving on. So once we have our lens profile loaded and our video file, we're gonna open up our uh, gyro data. Now the gyro data that I'm using, uh, I'm using black box. From what Paul said, it sounds like the best, one of the better gyro sources to use is a GoPro. And that makes a ton of sense if you're throwing a cinema camera on a big drone and then stabilizing it later, throw a little GoPro on there. In my case, I'm trying to get to a lightweight freestyle setup with just the DJI Action 2. So adding on a GoPro doesn't make sense. So what I'm doing is I'm using the black box logs from Betaflight itself. So we're gonna open up our black box log that corresponds to this flight. And now it is open. Now there's a couple of things that you're gonna to wanna to do when you're using black box uh, logs in order to stabilize it. Number one, I recommend running this low pass filter. I've not experimented yet on the best uh, frequency to use for that low pass filter, but the default of 50 Hertz has been working decently for me so far. The next thing that you need to do is set the rotation. The camera mount that I have the camera mount on my drone is roughly 20 degrees of camera angle. See right there? And so uh, I am gonna set the pitch angle to 20 degrees. Bam. So now we've told it that the pitch of the camera is 20 degrees off from the pitch of the gyro device. So the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna figure out what kind of offset it is. By default, what you'll notice here in the main screen, we have a timeline and the gyro data is all the way to the left. And then there's a bunch of stuff at the right. You can see that I'm still flying here and uh, we don't have gyro data. So the gyro data, um, before we've synced it or anything, it's just like, okay, I think that this is it. The video starts, the gyro starts. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uh, come over here, I'm gonna play the footage and wait until I hear the motors start spinning. When the motors start spinning, you've armed the drone and the uh, black box is has begun logging. So we're just gonna keep playing until I hear that. Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, that basically happened at about 21, 22 seconds. Yep, 21 seconds. So I'm gonna come up here to the rough gyro offset in the top right of the screen. I'm gonna set that to 21 seconds. Now, the default for the sync search size was five seconds, and it's looking for, what that is is it's looking for a window of time of that length where the image stabilization and the gyro data line up, okay? Paul recommended running with a max sync points of two and that's what I've been doing and having good results. I ended up bumping up the sync search size from five to 10. I just threw a random number out, it, the software started working for me and I've left it at that point and not messed with it any more since. Now, once we've done that, you're gonna click auto sync. It's gonna run and do its magic. Bam, now we have two sync points here. You can see they are these yellow lines. Once you click on the yellow line you're, and move the timeline to that area, you will see all of these optical flow little data points as well. Now I'm just scrolling in order to zoom in on the timeline and you see that we don't get a lot of data. It looks like two basically flat lines here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold control on the Mac and zoom, scroll to the right. And that's gonna expand it vertically, right? And you can see here that our traces are now lining up. We have the kind of darker blue, red, and green traces that go along the entire thing. And then we have the brighter blue, green, and red traces that are just around our sync points. And you can turn those off by clicking the X, Y, and Z. On the right side of the screen is for the optical stuff. The left side is all of the gyro data, okay? But you just wanna ensure that these line up. Now you can do some fine tuning with this slider here. As you can see here, the blue line is lining up perfectly and the red and green, there's a little bit of um, jitter there in the green, but uh, overall it mostly is lining up. So that looks good to me. I'm gonna zoom out. I'm gonna go check on the other sync point here. So. Looking at our other sync point that it has found for us, that is also looking good. Now, at this point, we are good to go with uh, syncing up the black box and the video footage. Now, there's a few more steps here that I like to do. At this point, you can go and review your footage and make sure that everything is looking very nice and to your liking. And it honestly it looks really smooth here. If we turn off the stabilization, you're gonna get in this section, I was still flying pretty smooth, right? But I'm gonna bring it back. We're gonna turn it back on. Watch it come through here. Now, it's also set to a pretty low amount of smoothness. Um, there are a couple of other things that you want to, to do. Uh, Paul shows this and uh, if you zoom out the field of view, you can kind of see what the software is working with. This overall image and uh, with all of the de-warping that has been applied and then the safe zone, the little light square in the middle. He was showing this, didn't tell, or I missed the part where he said how to turn it on. That's gonna be used by turning on the safe area guide. So turn on that safe area guide and you can watch and see exactly what the safe area would be with the stabilization, right? Oops. All right. Now, one, if you wanted to, there are options to lock the horizon. You can do uh, dynamic zooming, which is kind of like that Real Steady does, where it zooms in uh, depending on exactly, uh, you know, it'll zoom in depending on how much stabilization needs to be applied for a section. You see it, how it's zoomed in quite a bit right here, and it's going to zoom back out over time. Now, I, I'm not a huge fan of that dynamic zooming. The type of uh, use case for me for this footage is for a freestyle video. I want to show the movements of the quad. I just want it to be smoothed out a little bit to be more enjoyable for the average viewer, right? So I don't actually use this dynamic zooming. I set that to static zoom uh, and keep going from there. Now, you can get into... Uh, you can lock the horizon if you wanted to. I don't find this particularly useful. Uh, it, I mean, look, it works pretty dang good, but it's not, it's not the style of footage that I'm gonna use. Uh, I haven't messed around with the rolling shutter correction, but this is pretty much what I've used so far. Now, the depending on how much smoothness you want, it will zoom in 
an appropriate amount on the footage, as you can see here. Pretty cool. Anyways, uh, I find that somewhere around the 0.1 to 0.2 range is adequate for the type of filming that I'm gonna do. Now, the one thing that I do end up doing at this point is I don't want to export in 4-3 uh, aspect ratio. So I'm going to unlock the output size and I'm going to change this. I wish they had just a simple uh, aspect ratio, but I'm gonna change that to 3840 by 2160. Bam, and that is gonna be our 4K resolution. So I'm gonna leave it at uh, 3840 by 2160. So now that I've got it set to 3840 by 2160, we're gonna put our stabilization to 0.1, because I don't want a ton, I just want it to be a little bit smoother than what you get straight out of the camera, right? And uh, you can watch this footage now. I've still got the field of view zoomed way out, so we're seeing exactly what's happening with our footage. I'm gonna zoom it in so it's filling up more of the screen. But I'm gonna leave it going here. And you can see the overall image moving around. Now, when you're ready to export, you're gonna to wanna to move that field of view back to the 1.0, not to the this entirely wide uh, view, because otherwise you're gonna get those black bars, you're gonna have the whole thing. So I'm gonna set this now to one on the field of view and what you're gonna see is what you get. Boom. Looks good. Nice freestyle footage. Ooh, so juicy. <laughs> All right, now the last thing that I wanna do before I export is this use GPU encoding. If you hover over it, it's gonna tell you a little bit about that. The GPU encoding is going to allow you to export it faster. However, there may be issues that you see in the actual footage. So since I am trying to make the best footage for you guys, I don't use the GPU encoding. I just deselect that and uh, click my export. Once you click export, it is gonna export the video and you're gonna get the file based off of what kind of encoding etc that you've done I've been using the x.264 you can use x.265 ProRes PNG sequence um, you know it depends on your editing software and what you're working with and what's gonna work best for you now my experience is exporting this file here I was able to get uh, it took me about 30 minutes to export the full file. If you know you're only going to use a section of the flight, then I did a smaller export that took like five minutes for a little less than a minute of footage. So, you know, just be smart about what you're uh, doing here. And you've got a nice stabilization options. There are some downsides to using this workflow. It's a lot more work. I have to come in here to a whole different piece of software. I've got to have black box logs. I've got to make sure that I can sync up the black box log with the flight that it is. And if I crash and disarm, I'm gonna have multiple black box logs for one flight. So it is definitely not ideal. It would be much better uh, if Gyroflow supported the gyro data that is already on the DJI Action 2's uh, video files, I don't know if that's gonna be possible. I know that it's something that they're looking into, something that they want to do. Um, if and when that happens, this workflow will get significantly easier. Um, it's not gonna, it's still not gonna be the easiest thing. And some of those stabilization issues that I've seen may be a result of the actual gyros that are in action too. So if that is the case, then gyroflow is not gonna save you. If you've got bad gyro data, you have bad gyro data. So uh, yeah, lots of caveats to this. I'm gonna lose the ultra wide uh, field of view when editing like this, which I'm bummed about. <sighs> a lot harder workflow, um, a lot more ways to screw it up. So I'm, I don't know that it's something I'm gonna do all the time. For argument's sake, I am gonna go ahead and let, leave you guys with a couple of clips of unstabilized 16.9 ultra wide footage and the stabilized footage from the 4.3 let you see what you think. And I'm gonna make some decisions on my own based off of that. I may start filming and unstabilized for my FPV stuff. I'm just gonna have to see what makes sense for me going forward. <laughs>
you guys enjoyed it and learned something today. And if you did, please click that like button. Let me know in the comments what your thoughts are on stabilized versus unstabilized FPV footage. I gotta figure out what it is that I'm gonna be doing with all of my footage going forward. Now, if you're not already, please consider subscribing. It really helps out this channel and I would appreciate it if you guys made it back and got to check out some of the future content that I've got coming for you. If you enjoyed this and you wanna learn more about the DJI Action 2 or any GoPro or all of the action cameras that are on the market right now, I've got a link for you right here in my action camera rundown where you'll get all of the details on all of the great cameras that are on the market. Well, I hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you here again next time. Bye.